Are you familiar with this device? It's called a sound level meter or noise meter. You might have seen one in YouTube reviews of computer hardware. When reviewing hardware, it's not enough to say this video card is very loud or this power supply is extremely quiet. Subjective descriptions only go so far and what we need are numbers. Information grounded in measurements, not opinions. This is why reviewers use meters like this one, which let them see noise as a number and then easily compare it to other hardware. Unfortunately, this one number alone cannot fully describe a sound. After all, humans hear differently than a microphone would, and we can easily test this. Let's see how this sound level meter will measure three completely different sounds. First, a pure tone with one kilohertz frequency. Then three mixed tones, one, one and a half, and two kilohertz. And finally, white noise, which is a mix of all audible frequencies. You probably don't feel that all three sounds were just as annoying, although our microphone and your speakers do not reproduce them perfectly. But the meter says they were all equally loud. So what's really going on? One of the factors is frequency weighting. Notice the units on the display. A after decibels means that the meter is not treating all the frequencies equally. Some parts of the sound spectrum are suppressed and don't influence the measurement as much as other. Frequency weighting A is a very old standard. It was designed to represent the sensitivity of human hearing, which is at its best between two and four kilohertz. But this standard does not represent our current knowledge about hearing or the capabilities of modern digital filters. The red curve is much closer to the real sensitivity of hearing, but even that is a simplification. It's valid for pure tones, and mixed frequency noise is something quite different. On top of that, our ears can ignore some sounds if there's a louder sound in neighboring frequency or if it's not directly in front of our heads. They can even hallucinate frequencies that aren't even there. Psychoacoustics is the study of all these effects, how our perception of sound is different than physical parameters suggest. The knowledge of psychoacoustics has been applied for decades. For example, in lossy audio compression, even in the movie you are watching right now. If we know what will be audible to the listener and what will be hidden by his sense of hearing, we can discard a lot of data without degrading sound quality. It's enough to keep most of the sounds that someone actually standing in front of me would hear. Noise level measurements are a very useful tool. Unfortunately, they are far too simplified to be used in our engineering. At our research and development department, we analyze the entire spectrum of sound emitted by a cooling system. That way we can make our fans quiet not only to solace instrument, but also to humans. That's what we call a psychoacoustic optimization.